What's up guys and welcome to the Naked Batman Show and this is your host Blake and this is my Middle Earth Tapestry. It's pretty cool. Anyway, um, just we'll just jump right in. Um, Avengers number two. You know, I said in a previous video that I would probably give all um, Avengers, you know, issues after number one a, four, a five out of five. Just because I didn't like the throat, you know, the kind of hearkening back to the previous series. <clears throat> and uh, I proved myself right because, <laughs> because I mean, this one was a good issue. I mean, they're introducing more heroes, they're incorporating more people, and I like the way the story's going. So, and and it, there was just, it felt like a brand new series. It just felt like fresh, exciting, you know, you can't wait to see what's going to happen. So, I give it a 5 out of 5. If you're not reading Avengers, pick it up. Definitely good series. Good place to start, too. I mean, because it, it's, even though that first part was a little confusing, it's a good place, you know, if you've never really read Avengers stuff, it's a good place to kind of get started. I, I feel like that the first, you know, the, these first two issues have been, have been pretty good. You know, they've been pretty uh, simple, but entertaining. And, and there's not a lot of um, Avengers that they've showed that, people aren't familiar with there's a few but most of them people know and like it starts off with the team from the movie so everybody pretty well knows those guys so yeah it's a pretty good starting place so daredevil 21 um really anybody who just likes a good kind of a detective slash superhero you know story I mean, because it's got a little a bit of the detective flair to it, because it's just, you know, a lot of stuff doesn't get answered for a while, you know, and it's just like, a lot of it's just, it keeps unraveling and unraveling, so it's really cool, it, um, it's continuing with this jackal, what was it, jackal, not jackal, that's in a different comic I'm reading, <laughs> coyote, yeah, coyote and, uh, spot, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the uh, two villains that he's been kind of facing off with, and it's uh, it's been pretty good. Like, I mean, if you haven't been reading this series, definitely go pick up the volume sets. There's like on it's like on four now, I think. Because I mean, if you see that right there underneath the author, you know, the uh, the writer and the artist, you know, it, I can't get it to focus. But you know, this series has won an Eisner Award. And that's a pretty big deal, you know, so I mean, you know, I, mean, I think it's worthy of it because, I mean, Mark Wade is just an exceptional writer, and I mean, he's doing an Indestructible Hulk now, and it's, and that, you know, has been amazing too, so I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just partial because I'm a Daredevil fan, but really it was this series that really got me into Daredevil because just the writing and the storytelling is just so good, so definitely five out of five uh, i'll give every dare, daredevil <laughs> a five out of five unless it does this unless it ruins my life like this <laughs> like i don't even know what to say about this i mean i like the fact that it was a really big fat issue <laughs> and i like the cover but that's about where my likes end i mean i kind i like the story but not as an amazing title you know like maybe as a one shot or as a you know a mini series um but not as an amazing title and definitely not as the end of amazing that makes me sick to my stomach because like i said my suspicions were true you know back a few videos back that doc ock is going to be the new superior spider-man but i mean you know they make this connection in the end spoiler alert you know <laughs> well, a little late, because Doc Ock is going to be Spider-Man, so I just ruined it for you. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, I mean, the fact that Doc Ock and Peter Parker, when, when Peter was dying in Doc Ock's body, that they made some kind of connection, and he was remembering Peter's memories, um, I, I think it, it made some of the weirdness kind of alleviate, because you can see there's still a part of Peter that's still alive in Doc Ock in Peter's body, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's just not right, you know, I mean, like, there will never be another real, you know, there'll never be another legitimate Spider-Man other than Peter Parker, 
Miles Morales, he's there, but he's never going to be a really exceptional, you know, legendary Spider-Man like Peter Parker. You ask anybody on the street who is Spider-Man, well, if they're not, you know, crazy or detached or just, you know, old, they'll know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. They're not going to think Miles Morales, you know, they're not going to think of any, they're not going to think of Doc Ock and Peter Parker's body, you know, I mean, who's going to think of that? That's stupid. It's Peter Parker who is Spider Man. So honestly, I hope I hope this Dan Slot guy gets enough flack over his buffoonery that he will go back and write seven hundred and one <laughs> explaining like somehow tying tying it back into like making it a bad dream of Spider Man's or something. Just something like that. Because I mean it's it's seriously just I don't know. It's so upsetting because this is 50 years of Amazing Spider-Man. 50 years of this title. Like, continuously. Number 700. I mean, that's from, you know, Stan Lee's number one all the way till now. And this is the way it ends? No. See, that, that just it makes me sick to my stomach. So, I don't know. I give it a 3 out of 5 because I like the story. But I hate what he did to it. I, no, actually, I take it back. I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. Because even the story wasn't that terrific to me. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know what these people were thinking. Because this series was really good. It was really good. And then it just, I don't know, tanked. Ruined it. So, you'll probably you'll see me review uh, Superior Spider-Man 1 next month, but this really makes me sick, so, the, I wouldn't have too high hopes for Superior Spider-Man, because I'm probably not going to give it a very high rating, <laughs> but, um, it's, it's going to have to be a, a really good writing and really good art for me to really think twice about it, but anyway, X-Men Schism, I got this the other day, and I've really been wanting to read it, I've read some of it, and it's really cool, you know, if you, you know, it's kind of the, um, precursor to the, uh, you know, this, really it's kind of the precursor to AVX, because, you know, a lot of the stuff that's happening in here, you know, um, it's kind of, you know, what grows into the, the tension that causes, you know, them to accept the Phoenix Force, basically, you know, and think that they can use it, you know, a lot of that is rooted in what's happened here, as far as I understand, so I'm really eager to read this, and I'll be, hopefully I'll be reviewing that soon. Yeah, but it's no guarantee. <laughs> and uh, my parents got me this. I thought it was really cool. It was a uh, um, Captain Kirk action figure. It's pretty cool. And uh, I like the boots and the pants. The only thing I didn't like about the shirt was this little seam back here with the Velcro. But other than that, it's pretty cool. Like, it comes with a base and a uh, uh, reco uh, recorder. What am I saying? Uh, communicator. And a phaser, and it also comes with a tricorder, but, you know, Kirk never wears a tricorder, so I didn't put it on him. But, yeah, it's a really good figure. Um, pretty decent likeness to Captain Kirk, so I really like it. It's just cool for a Star Trek fan like me, <laughs> um, you know, just to have around, you know, just sitting on a shelf. It's really cool. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I think it's like the Commander series or something like that. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then finally, I got the amazing Spider-Man action figure, which <laughs> is a pretty amazing figure, but it just reminds me of that <laughs> right now, so I'm kind of sad. But um, really, it's um, just, I'm really not going to get into the um, articulation because it's so much, like, it just, it's got so much articulation. And uh, it's got interchangeable hands, like it's either got, you know, for both hands it has a web shooting hand and then it, and then the fist and there's the um there are the spare hands right there and the base is really cool because you can there's those pegs right there that you can have him like stuck to the wall and uh I don't know it's really cool like I, I'm having a hard time getting my figure on there but I'll figure it out so it's really cool really cool base just well made figure just uh I don't know, probably the best one I've seen. So, definitely, if you're looking for a Spider-Man figure, this is the, you know, this is just the best. So, it's the best I've seen, at least. 
So, yeah, definitely pick it up if you're into Spider-Man or action figures. So, it's just really, really posable. I don't know, I just really like it. So, all right. This has been the Naked Batman Show, and this is Blake, and I'm going to go sob now over this. So, goodbye.